Oh, ducky beans. Are you ready for our weekly Starbucks jaunt? Ducky. Oh. So me and Douglas are gonna go get our weekly Starbucks. I try to only get Starbucks once a week, a treat yourself moment, so I don't spend a mini fortune on coffee that I could drink at home. And Douglas likes pup cups. I don't know if you could tell by the size of his haunches, but he's a big fan of a pup cup. He does partake. <laughs> Little sweater. Try not to show the people my bubbies. This shirt is low cut. You don't care. You only care about putting on your little vest. You gotta calm yourself down. Calm. 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 This barista looks like Bo Burnham. Bo Burnham. Body. Well, that was an emotional roller coaster for Douglas. At first, they were like, We have no whipped cream. And then at the last minute, they came in clutch and they're like, Oh, we just got some in. Would you like a pup cup? And I was like, Yes, that's the whole reason Douglas came. He loves his pup cup. There you go, my honey. But I got my tried and true nitro cold brew. Ugh. Do we have a napkin and a spatch? We have an old receipt. Survival is going to go not to the strongest or the most intelligent, but the most adaptable. We are really a survivalist out here. The barista that looked like Bo Burnham asked me if Douglas was a service animal, I guess because his vest kind of looks service animal-y. And I told him that he's not. He does emotionally support me, but he is not official by any means. That was the banter of the day. Okay, we have dropped the bean machine off at the house. Now we are going to run some errands. I'm sitting outside of Lowe's. I need to get some supplies for this project that I wanna do that I've been like sitting on for the past two, three months. I don't know. You know how I do things and it's not quickly. <laughs> It's just kind of my brand at this point. By the way, speaking of my brand, my new favorite brand of lip balm is this Clean and Pure from Thrive Market, which just so happens to be the sponsor of today's video. But I will never use anything else on my lips ever again. Fun fact about me, chapstick that's like flavored makes me feel sick, it's just like nauseous. I don't know why, but I love this stuff. It's unscented, obviously, and it just feels like butter, but it's not like super oily to where it makes you feel gross. Do you know what I mean? It's like that perfect in between of like hydrating, but like not waxy. I don't know. Um, anyways, <laughs> let's do the ad read really quick since I already mentioned the sponsor because that's probably a good segue. I don't know. Um, and then we'll get into some tea, a little bit of tea for you guys. Hopefully you guys know by now, but Thrive Market is an online membership-based market that's on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. It's no secret that I do not really like the grocery store. So having a service like Thrive is right at my alley. I get to enjoy their member-only prices. Thrive Market works directly with my favorite organic brands in order to like, you know, cut out the middleman. So you get the highest quality products at the best price possible. And they're 100% committed to never surge pricing. You can shop everything from ethically sourced pantry essentials to sustainable seafood and meat to non-toxic home cleaning supply and beauty products. I did a mix this time. I got some beauty products. I got some pantry essentials. Really anything I need, they got me covered. And your grocery order that exceeds $49 ships for free from Thrive's zero waste carbon neutral warehouse. Thrive Market's really on a mission to be the world's first climate positive grocery store. So I think that's really cool. Also, so another really cool thing about Thrive is they have a program called Thrive Gives, and that's basically a one-for-one -one membership matching program. So every paid-for membership gives a membership to a low-income family. But speaking of memberships, they have a couple of different membership opportunities available. You can get a one-month membership for $9.95 per month, or if you're all gung-ho like I was, I went ahead and got their 12-month membership because it works out to just $5 a month. So if you guys are interested in trying out Thrive Market, you can join today, use my link in the description below, and you get 25% off of your first order and also a free gift. A huge thank you to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Okay, so a little bit of a development in my life. 
actually a pretty big one. And this is not going to shock anybody. No one's going to be taken by surprise by this news. In fact, you guys are the reason why I even thought to look into this in the first place. Since the conception of this channel, I have gotten the comment, Hey! Don't take any offense to this, but the things you talk about, the things you do, the way that you are, you know, it's pretty reminiscent of someone with ADHD. Maybe you should kind of get that checked. And by the way, I take no offense by those comments. Actually, I'm very thankful to the people who brought it to my attention because I would have never, I would have never thought because the things I knew about ADHD were very limited. I thought of someone with ADHD as a hyperactive little kid. You know, the boy in class that did not sit still. I never in a million years would have guessed that it would present itself in a 29 year old lady that makes vlogs on the internet about their boring ass life. But here we are. Yesterday, I had an appointment with a psychiatrist. It was a two hour long appointment. I basically vomited my entire existence to this man from like birth till now. He asked me a ton of questions about the way that I am, the way that I react to things, just like all of this stuff. So by the end of this appointment, I had a formal diagnosis of inattentive type ADHD. And he said I also presented a lot of characteristics of uh, someone with Asperger's and if you don't know what that is it's kind of I, I guess it's basically just like mild autism if you didn't know ADHD and autism are pretty closely linked and ADHD a lot of times is very underdiagnosed in women because I guess it was like mainly studied in boys and it presents differently in women what an attentive type ADHD is it's basically not really the hyperactive component of it. It's daydreaming, getting distracted, you have a hard time starting things, depression, anxiety, binge eating, all of that stuff kind of just like is packaged up in this nice little ADHD box. And I was thinking about it last night and I was thinking about all of these instances in my life where I had felt shame, where I had reacted to a certain situation or felt a certain way that like most people like wouldn't have reacted like that, wouldn't have felt like that. For example, like on my 21st birthday, my ex-boyfriend and his whole family threw me this surprise party. Little fun fact about me, I don't like my birthday. I don't like parties that are about me. I haven't ever since I was a kid. I would like hide under the table and I would not want birthday parties as like a little child. But anyway, they threw me like this surprise party, which was very, very nice. You know, they liked me. It's a nice thing for people to do. But that party like came to an abrupt stop when I like had a panic attack, was like completely overwhelmed and I like bawled my eyes out in front of everybody, which is insanely embarrassing. And it makes me look like a brat that's like not grateful, which is not how I felt at all, but I just can't handle social situations the same way that a lot of people do. And you know, I got overwhelmed. But so I was thinking about situations like that and there were quite a bit of them where I felt a lot of shame and I was like, why can't I just be normal? But the truth is, and it's kind of relieving actually, is I'm not normal, you know? I'm on that neurodivergent spectrum. I'm not neurotypical, so I wouldn't react to things the same way someone who's neurotypical would. And so like, as far as how I feel about this whole thing, I feel like this huge like weight being removed. And I didn't think that I would feel that way because I've been speculating a bit that like, you know, that I've had this for quite a while, probably over a year since y'all brought it to my attention. But like hearing that and having it validated by a professional was pretty helpful. So, so that's kind of weird to me, I don't know. As far as treatment goes, I am gonna try a medication. Part of the reason why it took me so long to actually make this appointment is I was, I, I knew if I had it, I would be probably suggested a medication and <laughs> I was a little bit afraid of taking a medication but in the past few weeks I've been really struggling. I very much have the feeling of you know being overwhelmed by just existing. Kind of like slipping into like that depressive state again, a lot of anxiety. Um, I haven't been binging actually which you know was probably if you guys don't know binge eating actually kind of like 
gives you that dopamine hit. So I haven't been getting that. So I've kind of been just sinking into depression a little bit. I, you guys have noticed I haven't been uploading videos on time. I haven't been, I've been like skipping weeks of uploads and it's because I can't like will myself to do it. Like I just, I want to do it, but I can't like, I can't start, which is very frustrating. It's like being in a mental prison. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, but that's kind of where I've been for the past few weeks, months. I don't know, just kind of slipping in and out of that feeling. Basically, the psychiatrist said that in a lot of cases, if you get the ADHD in control, a lot of the symptoms that the ADHD causes, as far as anxiety, depression, binge eating, have the potential to lessen. And I was just like, hmm, if the symptoms of depression and anxiety lessen just a little bit, that would improve my quality of life tremendously. So I just feel like if the medication has the potential to improve my quality of life, I'll risk the side effects <laughs> of the medication. But look at me crying in a Lowe's parking lot. That's not where we want to be. So we're going to go in there. We're going to buy some things and maybe finish one of the projects on my list of the mini projects that I have to do. But first we're gonna kind of take a beat and so we don't look like we've been crying. <laughs> okay, so we are gonna put our mask on because you know, maybe we're being socially responsible. There is a new COVID variant or we're just hiding this pimple from all of the daddies in Lowe's. So am I socially responsible or vain? I'll never tell. Let's go. Okay, so I made it out of Lowe's without purchasing another plant that I would just kill when I have a slurry of plants that are just being neglected at home. We obviously changed because whose idea was it to wear a flannel in August? A little dummy did that. But I wanted to ask you guys about this thing, which is a Monstera. And it's the only plant that I have that's kind of thriving in the moment. I mean, look at this. Look at these leaves with the little vents. While he's thriving, he's kind of like not shapely, not very pretty at all. And I don't know if he needs a bigger pot. Please advise. I bought these like stick things to prop him up on, on Amazon. Someone in the comments suggested that I do that. So thank you for that. By the way, if you're wondering why Chetty is yellow, nobody really knows what he rubbed into. I think he got into my art supplies or something and I tried to wipe him off with a wipey, but he is just stained. So that's something that he did to himself, I didn't do to him. It's not like that situation where people are dyeing their poodles pink. It's Chetty being a cat that gets into things. When I came home and I saw that he was yellow, I thought Douglas had peed on him. Um, and I was a little bit disturbed, but then it didn't smell like pee. So I don't know what he got into. I looked all over the house trying to find what it could have been. None of my yellow paints were disturbed or leaking or anything like that. So I really am not sure what happened. By the way, I later found out what the yellow stuff on Chetty was. And it's like these little, I don't know, are these called stymons? <laughs> Um, on these flowers, they have this orangish powder and he must have rubbed up against these. Does this look better or worse? At least it's like going upward, mostly. As far as other plants I have, I have these Christmas cactuses that my grandma gave me. This one and 
that one over there, which is also a Christmas cactus, but most of it had died. When my grandma gave me these plants, she was made this like huge deal about how like a portion of it was red, a portion of it was pink, and like she had gotten clippings from my great grandma, how this was like a multi-generational plant, and now she's giving it to me, and all this stuff. <laughs> and I promptly just like, that one's murdered, and then this one is just barely coming back from the brink of death. I repotted it, and it was like, almost dying but i just thought it was funny how because like i'm also like i made the decision like i am not having children i don't want children i'm literally and figuratively killing the family tree so i thought that that was kind of funny to think about and also sad <laughs> but anyway what we bought supplies for at lowe's was because do you see this surface right here it's a little bit scratched because Douglas had slapped his snass on it multiple times. Um, you can see the claw marks. And also the wood is just not really sealed right. So it's very absorbent. And I moved this plant the other day. And do you see that little ring underneath there? That is mold. So I really need to sand and stain this surface again. And what I was thinking might look really cool is to kind of just really make it dark. So I got this espresso stain, but I don't think I'm gonna be working on that project today just because it's a little bit later in the day. I probably need to do that early morning. So all day it can like, I can have the windows open and air out. I have multiple projects where I need to sand and stain things. I bought this chair from The Ark. And it's pretty awesome because the leather is green. Do you see the glory of this green leather? I don't know if you could tell how green it is because the lighting in here is not too good. It was half off originally $39.99. Bought it for 20 bucks. Super comfortable, super awesome chair. As you can see, these are like really worn down. So I bought some new stain and polyurethane to refinish this also i just need to like clean it up because it's like a little bit grody you know secondhand furniture kind of is sometimes I am feeling a little bit nauseous and headachey from smelling that polyurethane for an extended amount of time. I don't trust those people who like flipping furniture. I don't understand it. It's not fun. It's not enjoyable. And I spent probably two hours out there doing that. I probably didn't even do it right, first of all. <laughs> and second of all, there was like barely a difference in the before and after. <laughs> So <laughs> I do think it needs a second coat to make the stain a little bit darker, but it has to dry and be less sticky before I do that. But anyways, maybe we should figure out some kind of dinner, lunch. I don't know. It's like 3 p.m., but I haven't eaten anything except for coffee today. So that also might be a reason why I'm feeling a little bit nauseous because, I don't know, when I eat coffee on a empty stomach, it doesn't like really do much for me. It makes me feel a little bit sick. So let's eat this green banana. I know you guys get a little bit upset. So I'm just here to stir the pot, not me stirring the pot. What do you guys have against green bananas? They are the superior form of banana. What are you guys eating? Those brown speckled bananas? Those ones that taste like they're already rotten in this economy? That's heinous. I bought these spring roll wrappers a little while ago. I saw a TikTok where they made spring rolls and then now I can't find that TikTok and I don't really know what to do with them, but I'll figure out someday. Today is not that day. I feel like all I can muster in my heart and my soul is a big salad. It's big salad season. And what do we need for a big salad? A big 
mother flipping bowl. I also found these three sad cheese raviolis in the fridge, so I'm gonna eat these with this salad, so. Okay, so I realized that like <laughs> bath desk looks a little bit like I'm about to do some spells or incantations. However, I'm just doing a face mask and gonna be journaling. We have some bentonite clay just mixed with a little bit of water until it's a paste. It's supposed to like draw out imperfections or something like that. I've been trying to practice a little bit more self-care recently. Um, so I got back into journaling and I've been taking baths a lot more. This is a lot easier to do when I'm looking at myself in the thing. Symbol. But yeah, ever since I quit the pill birth control and got on the IUD, my hormones have been like just really giving me some deep cystic acne. <laughs> and that's fun as an adult. Definitely nowhere near puberty anymore. I forgot to get a towel. Darn it. Let me dry my hands off in my hair and I'll show you my journal that I got. I finally filled up my last moleskin journal that I had and I bought a new one. This one is green. My last one was red, but I've been really into green lately. So we're living for this. And I've just been like journaling my thoughts and feelings. It's something that I, got into a couple of years ago, and I've been off and on keeping a journal all this past year. But I love to like, as well as like doing like little, like writing things, like telling my journal about my life. And sometimes I'll like go on the internet and find writing prompts just to kind of, you know, have something to write about if my day wasn't particularly interesting. But I also like to paint in them, to like doodle in them, just like fun, like quick stuff. Typically the first page of all my journals have been some kind of quote or some kind of like, I guess, theme for the journal. Um, and I doodle a little picture. This time I used my watercolors and I just kind of like made some colors on there and I cut out a circle and then just put, just start which is the theme of my life. Like just freaking do it already. Just start. Um, what other pictures? I won't really share like what I've written because I pretty much share what I write anyway. But you know, I'll sometimes like paint little pictures, draw things. These are like Dolly's elephants. Again, just playing around with my new watercolors, even though this is definitely not the paper to do so. It's because you can see it's kind of squirrely, but I don't care, it's a journal, it's just for fun. But I've been trying to write in this every single day, just because it's kind of therapeutic. It's just fun to document, which I guess is my whole YouTube channel anyway, documenting stuff. But this is more of like a day-by-day -day basis, whereas my YouTube channel is more weekly when I actually upload. <sighs> but anyways, this face mask is starting to dry and get tight on my face. So I want to just thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you on the next one. Bye!